Lovely to see you, mate. Appreciate you calling in as always. Always appreciate you giving up your time. Um, do you have an answer for what Jory, for a question Jory just posed? Uh, well, well, first of all, Sim, I think what's got to happen now is uh, in future, any games away at Leicester, you, me and Grandpa have to go to them because <laughs> they've been non-existent since uh, the Bergwijn game. You've been there, we've lost 4-1 and now this one. Um, and it's, I, do you know what, the, the biggest issue, for, I think, for me today, um, our midfield just didn't look right. I don't think Saar looks like he, he's on form or... Or with it, and I think that the the trio just didn't blend well. Um, Madison had his best game in a long, long time, a long, long time. It's what you want to see, but we were just so open again, and that midfield was just getting exposed for me. That was the big, big issue. And with Jury saying about tactics, or he doesn't have the answers, I think it's got to be tactics. I think Ange does have the answers. I still back Ange. I still want Ange in the job. Uh, we cannot keep going through. I've said it time and time again. When we just keep sacking these managers mm. and then bringing new ones in just to repeat the same process over and over again. But he's got to take some responsibility and think, you know what, there are some times <laughs> where I just need to drop or do something just to, to, to weather the storm and then revert back to the offensive football he wants to play because we're getting exposed quite easily in that second half, weren't we? Yeah, do you think, because I, I think we thought Bentancourt played well and we thought Madison played well like you did. So do you think, is Saar kind of not technical enough for this at the moment? I mean, I, we do value, I think, his his legs and his ability to get up and down the yeah. pitch. But uh, I saw, um, I think it was uh, Windy from the Extra Inch said uh, on a tweet, he said that it's a bit of a problem having two players in Saar and Johnson, who both kind of run in straight lines, playing so close to one another. And I wonder if we need someone a bit more technical in there now. It's not a bad point, by the way. I mean, you look at it last season when we had the uh, Bissouma, Benton Court, uh, sorry, Bissouma, Saar, Madison for, after the, the two all draw to Brentford. That mm. midfield just, they everyone complimented each other, didn't they? They just, for like nine games, they were like unbreakable, untouchable. And it just thinks maybe it could have been the pre season and them all coming back at different stages. So they didn't have enough time to train with each other. Um, but we do, we do need. So I'm telling before I before I even ask you because I've got the train home and everything. Has there been any update on Benton Court since he's because yeah. I've not heard anything? Ange said um, that he's up and he's communicating. So from that point of view, he's fine. But obviously, it's a head injury, and he'll leave the rest to the medical team to see uh, any other lasting um, ramifications. But he seems to be okay, which is really positive. Yeah, it didn't look. I mean, we didn't. I didn't even see the actual challenge no, itself. I was just. No. Uh, but then they, when they didn't replay it, I was like, "Oh, this could this this could be bad." So just to see him up and being conscious when they're taking him on the stretcher was um, was. But what about what about Poro as well? And what is it mm. with Poro and not being substituted the second that man is limping badly? What when did it happen before? Did it happen? I can't remember. Having a Crystal Palace, having a Crystal Palace at home mm. last season where he was limping really badly. We kept him on for a while, and there's one more game that happened as well. We had Spence there. Um, I know the ball, the ball went out a couple of opportunities where it could. Maybe it doesn't. It wasn't that bad, and they're trying to hope he'd run it off. But um, any news on Poro? Nothing at the no, moment. I, I think for me that was that was disappointing because I'm sure Pedro thinks that he's being, you know, showing the crowd or the fans or whatever his bravery. But actually, there was about a two or three minute, four minute period, which is so important there, where we're basically down to ten men, and sometimes I think that's where. Do you remember the Brentford first game of last season? He took. Romero off when straight away when he had a head injury. Yeah. I think he ne he needed to do the same there. Just tell Porro to shut up and get off the pitch. And um, it didn't happen, which was a bit of a shame. But hopefully his uh, hopefully his ankle's not too bad. I, I hope so. I mean, it was a wonderful header. For what that header was lovely. And I think that's what we needed from Richie in the 90th minute, totally. wasn't it? More of a glancing <laughs> totally. header compared to that bullet header. Um, but talking about the forwards, I don't know what people have been saying about Solanke in his performance. I was actually really impressed with him. Mm. I really enjoyed. Wait, don't, don't get me wrong. He created a couple of chances, the header. But what I saw from him off the ball, the pressing, the get uh, and his movement always. When we were advancing and you looked at Solanke, he was always pointing where he wants the ball and making the runs. So that's something positive to take from him. Yes, he should have finished 
either the header or the shot in the second half. Yeah. But I for for his first game, obviously you want him to set the ground running. But I was actually impressed with what he was doing off the ball more than he was doing on it. Yeah, I think most people agree with you, Brian, to be honest. Most people have kind of said exactly what you've just said, and uh, it'll come. If he keeps making those great runs, it'll definitely come. Yeah, and I, 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 go on, Simeon, you're about to say something, bro. Now, just going for you, Brian, in terms of the overall picture of today, does it go down, do you chalk it down to just an unlucky game where, you know, we should have been 3 4 nil up and we didn't take our chances? Or is there something more to be concerned about after today? I mean, I think it's both. I think it's both. You've got to look at it. Yet it's only the first game of the season. This was a way to Leicester with no disrespect to Leicester. This is a game where you want to take three points. We should have taken three points. You know that it, we've seen it with people that if you make mistakes, look at the Newcastle Southampton game. They made that mistake, the goalkeeper. You make a mistake, you get punished in this league. Um, we created so many chances and so many times as well where we took one extra touch or had to make that extra pass. We've got to stop doing that. We have to stop doing that and being more ruth uh, be more ruthless because we got caught out. Leicester were piling on the pressure, hardly bothered us at all in the first half, and then out of nowhere. And to tell you the truth, before that Benton Claw collision, they were right on top of us. Yeah, they were. They were right on top of us and who knows what would have happened if if that hadn't happened. Um, but yeah, we've got to be more ruthless because you cannot keep doing this and ha creating all these chances and not taking them because um, you will get punished. It should have been three points. should have been an easy three points. But we, 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 we limp away with a one. I'm, I'm hopeful, Brian, that even though I, I kind of feel strongly that this was almost like the worst time to play Leicester because it's like a night game, they return to the Premier League, fans really up for it, etc. I'm kind of hopeful that maybe Saturday at three o'clock might be the best time to play Everton when they've just got absolutely pumped by Brighton, a team who play a kind of similar way to us. And hopefully they won't be as impressive at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium as they were last year, actually, mm. where they were, they actually bizarrely under Sean Dyche played a kind of proactive game of football against us, whereas I'm hopeful that maybe we'll, we'll catch them at the right time on Saturday. I, I will say, I think Bergvall has to start Saturday. I, would I love, play him I love Bergvall. I love I, him. Kulisevsky, listen, I've, I've been criti crit critical on Madison recently, as many people have, but literally I was writing, this is the James Madison we know and love, just as Leicester scored. So I thought, yeah, yeah. best not tweet that right now. Um, but when Bergvall came on and Kulisevsky, who Sim and I have gone back and forth with, <laughs> he looked very sharp again. He looked very, very sharp again. But Bergvall, I, I I don't know if Bergvall's best position is a 10 or an 8. A lot of people tell me that his best position, that Bergvall says himself, is an 8. I'd start him against Everton over Sar in a heartbeat, in, in an in absolute heartbeat. In terms of uh, Decky today, were, were you disappointed that maybe he didn't start considering how good he was in pre-season? I, well, this is the thing. I mean, I I generally thought he would stick with Madison. And the only place I would have wanted Kulisevsky to play is if he'd been playing in that central position. Um, so it was going to be a toss-up between them. And like uh, Hasper said, it was probably one of Madison's brightest, or it was one of Madison's brightest games for a long, long time, pre-injury or post-injury, shall I say, since he's come back. Um, yeah. And I actually think I've seen a lot of hate for Brennan Johnson. And, you know, I've come on and, and defended Johnson. So I think he started the first half well. I agree. I, first 20 minutes, uh, you know for sure. That, that, that volley that he had that was saved and then that volley that went straight across the goal from uh, another Madison yeah. free kick. Yeah. He started well. He, he started well. Made a really good defensive tackle. Just typically made a really good defensive tackle. Starts running and then fell over the ball. And it was like, oh, Brennan, Brennan, Brennan. Um and I but think, but don't, but don't, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Brian, but don't you think that's almost like what the Brennan Johnson's haters are looking for? Like something where he slips over or the ball goes off his shin out of play and then it's like, oh, you're having a bad game. But I actually agree. I think for the first 25, half an hour, I think he played well. He, he, listen, he needs much better output to, to play for longer uh, or be able to keep that going for longer. Um, I think at the time now as well, this is, see, this is what when we look at two weeks of the, or under two weeks now, in what we need. Obviously, we've got the, the Burnley winger who who knows if he comes in straight away, but Brennan Johnson also did very well when he came on as an impact sub. 
-hmm. When teams were tiring, he can use his pace and exploit it. The last minute goals he's got. And you know what? He did that when he came on. He created a lot against Crystal Palace, Brighton. Maybe this is what he needs. Maybe this is what he needs. I won't write him off as a Spurs player. Um, I still think he's going to have a a good season. But I think it's who we... Who would we start on the right? Do you start Kulisevsky, who I wouldn't, on the right? Because I just don't... I just where would you where would you two both if 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 Johnson was rested, who are you playing on the right against Everton? I guess, I guess it has to be Odebear. I mean, I don't know who else. Well, can I can I just say, Brian? I I really think it depends on who we're playing against. And I I said it, I've said it numerous times today. Now, I I was really surprised he started with Johnson to the point where I wonder if Kulisevsky had a knock or was ill in the week because. Mm. I thought he would start him on the right in the knowledge that he could cut in on his left and get loads of crosses in. And if you think about it, all that first half, we we killed them with crosses. We scored the goal from crosses, yep. both of Solanke's chances from crosses. So I was really surprised Johnson against a team. Yeah, I was really surprised against a team who I thought would most likely sit deep that he didn't play Kulisevsky. And I agree with you completely that against... That, in games where, you know, maybe it's like that and we're playing teams who are going to play 11 behind the ball, you start with Kulisevsky whipping in crosses for Solanke and then when it stretches, if we're ahead, one or two goals ahead and they have to come at us, you bring Brennan Johnson on and they take advantage round the back. Um, so, so I agree with you. And But against Everton, I think it's most likely that they'll probably sit back and try and hit us on the break. So I'd probably start with Kulisevsky. There you go. There you go. I would actually start. I, I just, I, I get what you're saying, Barnaby, but I just, Kulisevsky with his crossing on the right. I, it's just not been at it. Don't, mm. doesn't mean to say that he could start Saturday and it could be. Mm. Um, but who knows if... Why, why wasn't that... Is it true that it was a, a work visa thing, yeah? That wasn't done in time or, or whatever it was. Fo- Fodebear, Fodebear, yeah. Couldn't get a oh, work time in time. Oh, and then you've also got time. Mikey Moore that could, that could be on the bench, who knows, on, on Saturday. Mm. But we got... Let's just hope that with the, the time that we've got left we can get some players that can help Ange play the way he wants to play. And I think it, it goes to show that whether it's that Gomez from Wolves, if it's the guy I love, Morgan Gibbs White, or we definitely need a an energetic midfielder in there because the midfield is just too easy to dissect right now. Brian, I worried for a minute there that you were talking about the time we have left in our lives. <laughs> oh, mate, that, that, that's where I start talking about winning a trophy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. when you start talking about that but but the window I think it just goes to show that a midfielder is most certainly needed yeah top uh, man Brian Brian always great to hear you hear your opinion always a pleasure boys go I'll check out soon. Tottenham Have a good evening. if you want to see more Brian Daigle as you all know Brian. keep going you certainly will Brian. speak later love you bye bye